Hello, it's Daryl from Barbecue Superstars, and we're going to try to attempt to do chicken today. I've got a whole bunch of chicken laid out, breast, thighs, uh, wings, and legs. And uh, I'm going to try and do a competition type trim and prep on the thighs. And uh, I know that some people are using legs in their competition now, so I think pretty much all they do is uh, just make sure there's nothing bad on the thigh and then, uh, I mean on the leg, and then uh, turn it in. But everybody hates chicken, so we're going to try to do chicken. All right. As Seth Wateri, the professor of barbecue, my professor of barbecue, uh, would say, uh, the way to get chicken uh, moist is to brine it. So I've got a pot here that I've got about a gallon and a half of water in. And uh, I'm just going to use water as my base because I can't afford to buy a gallon and a half of chicken broth. But uh, I'm going to put two cans of chicken broth in it. I've got uh, four big chicken breasts, six thighs, uh, 12 legs, and eight uh, chicken wings to do. So I think this will be enough to uh, accomplish that. And I'm going to put this much honey, probably about four ounces of honey, six ounces of honey in it. And that might take a while. I should have had it turned over while I was uh, getting all the stuff out and getting it ready. Oh wow, there's some honeycomb in it. How about that? Okay, let me leave it turned over for a while while we're waiting. Okay, then I'm going to put some... Uh, yeah, get that thing stood up so run down. Uh, I'm going to put some uh, vinegar on it. Uh, cuts is just what was at Save a Lot. Uh, I don't really have a preference. I don't know. Maybe a quart, of, a quart of vinegar. I like vinegar in my chicken. I like vinegar in everything because it's South Carolina, but uh, I won't put that much. Then I'm going to put some sea salt, coarse salt, kosher salt. It says sea salt on here, but uh, it's just a uh, bigger. Uh, and then, last but not least, I love Zatarans. Uh, got some heat on it. I have to put heat in everything. I like hot food. It opens your head up. It's just really good for you. So I'm gonna put a little bit of heat in there to brine the chicken in. Which, since it's just brining it, it's not gonna transfer as uh, like. Uh, uh, I think a major influence on it. Yeah, let's see, we got some more honey that come out here. Okay. turned over okay so that's our brine and uh, I think you're gonna see me standing here and uh, throwing all this chicken over into the brine now I got Tyson chicken uh, it was just happened to be on sale up there at Ingles so that's what I got and uh, you know I know uh, Ingles market up here in Inman uh, is the one I went to because it's right by my house. Uh, I know there's a lot of competitors who like to use Publix, and uh, uh, they probably do have some fantastic chicken at Publix. So I don't, I don't have any preference. Uh, the only thing I'm doing is uh, uh, just going and buying the cheapest thing, I, or the only thing, yeah, cheapest and the only thing I can get uh, close to the house. Now let's see if we can strip this chicken off this this skin off the thigh. So we can start uh, squaring it up. Seriously, smoking did a chicken prep that was just 
off the chain and, and that's sort of what I'm going to try to mimic right here is seriously smoking's chicken prep uh, uh, I went down to the Carolina uh, Pitmaster Barbecue School and I purposely didn't put the full chicken prep that they did in there because uh, you have to go to the school and pay to get all the information they have uh, but what I'm going to do here is just there's a piece of fat I'm going to take it off and I'm going to start looking at this thing and trying to square it up uh, let's see now there's an oyster on the bottom right here you want to take the oyster off and uh, I'm going to save looks like somebody might have took most of the oyster off of this one well maybe Ingles is competition prepped I don't know okay so what what you know they said on the a lot of the preps that I've seen is number one scrape all the fat off yeah, there's a lot of fat right there scrape the skin and try to make it thinner so let's see well, heck, all the fat's off of that one my goodness of course we want to square it up because all we want to do is fold the flap over so what does it take to square this up well looking kind of oblong shoot it might have no uh -uh, it's all right no. take this off i'm using cutco knives and i tell you what they really do cut good you don't have to spend a lot of time uh now that bone let's see try and square this thing up oh, let's see now I'd really like to cut that bone off so I can grab the top of this thing and see if it's not to cut the bone off. <laughs> yeah, cut it off. Look at there. How about that now? I'll cook that. Okay, obviously, I'm going to have to cut the skin to square it up. see if I get better and better at this as we move on with her with all the other pieces okay now hmm. well, let's see what do you think about that looks like this corner right here so I'll tell you what let's take the skin off okay now that's the back corner that connects it See if we can square it up just a little more. It's, just, uh, it's definitely throwing a corner out there. I'm not going to take the skin off. I'm just going to take the piece of chicken off of it. Okay, let's see now. There's a big piece of fat right there. How about that? see how we're looking how we're cooking how we're cooking how we're looking
How about that? Okay, we'll set that down to Brian. Let's try that. That's piece number one. All right, let's try this one. And this is, this has got a great big old oyster on it. That's uh, right there. Save that. We'll cook it good and feed it to the dogs. They will like it. And uh, that's just meat, no bone. Now a flat edge on it. Hmm. Ain't no fat on it. <laughs> There's a fat on the top corner up here. Okay. Well. Can't get much better than that. These are some lean pieces of chicken. Cut this fat off here. Chicken is the hardest one to prep. A lot of competitors hate doing it. I can see why. I mean, it's the... mm -hmm. Let's see. What's going to take to square this one up? What's in that bird? Take that corner off right there. Let's see, if we get a little more square, put this square. Okay, once again. I'm gonna saw this head bone off the head of it. Now I'm trying to make a better looking piece. Okay. Cut this skin off of it. Uh -huh. That ain't too bad. What do you think? Okay, let's do one more. Uh, skin on that one looking pretty rough, but we'll try it anyway. Here's the oyster. Start off getting that oyster off of there. What's been said that I heard about the oyster is, is that uh, it tastes different than the rest of the piece of the thigh. So the flavoring will be different, so they'll bite into it, and there'll be a substantial difference in the two, the two different pieces of meat, is what I've heard. Plus, uh, the texture and consistency of the oyster is different than the rest of the meat, so uh, if uh, you leave it on there, they get some nice, soft, juicy thigh meat in the other part of the bite, but in the part of the bite that... Uh, uh, you get with the oyster it's going to be different and so we want consistency in that magic bite when they try to bite the uh, you know, I might just take the skin all the way off this one uh, and so I can get that fat right there so extra fat right here and, uh, now I'm sure when I put it in the brine that that one there is really substantially not square. I think I'm starting to see why they put them legs 
on the table so they don't have to bend over. Square it up, square it up, square it up, square it up. Let's see now. Let's take off the very end of this bone. Now I've still got the bone in there. It's just I took the head off to square it up. Okay, let's see. Uh, see what do with this. Okay, I know we're going to take this off. I hope I don't wait to put it on before I take it off. But. Skin thin, so it comes right through it very easily. And all the chicken fat off of it. Need some sharp knives. Well, what do you think? Started off pretty rough. Uh, well, maybe not too bad for a rookie. Okay, we'll put it in a brine. Okay, let's get some uh, let's get some chicken breasts out. Let's see what we can do with these. I don't know many people who compete using chicken breasts, but uh, not bad. Tell you what, for our uh, cook today, I'm gonna take the skin off. Get the little more of fat right there out of there. We're gonna try and go lean and healthy. Now I've got the the bone in it, so there's a little piece of bone sticking off. It came from the factory. So I'm gonna take it off. Put it in there, put it in our brine. Great big old chicken breasts. They were on sale at Ingalls for 98 cents a pound. <clears throat> okay. Okay, we got these. Uh, Egg quarters. I mean, uh, drumsticks. Let's see now. Shoot, looking pretty good. I don't know, man. What you gonna do with that? 
Put it in bra and let it soak. Ain't really much you can do with that. I see why some people might be using the drumsticks for a competition because you can't do a whole lot of trimming on that. And then the last thing we got, of course, is chicken wings. Now, friends, there's only one way to season chicken wings. You got to make a barbecue sauce got vodka in it and uh, of course it needs to be pretty hot now uh, Williams Wills Wills barbecue sauce uh, it's got a real spicy barbecue sauce and uh, I think I'm gonna try that on these chicken wings today uh, but just like the rest of it I'm gonna go ahead and brine it too and then we're gonna let it set for about four or five hours and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna season them up okay I got my chicken wings they've done brine for four or five hours and I'm gonna break them in half C-Dub Rub, he got his uh, hot wings uh, rub here, and I stuck my finger in it and tasted it, and woo, 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 oh, this stuff is hot, this stuff is real hot, I mean, this stuff ain't playing, it's hot, it's, uh, <laughs> it's hot, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here, uh, I'm gonna do half of them, I'm not gonna do them all. I have to see with my kids, uh, but now it's hot, but it's good. You know, this is real good. I mean, shoot, I liked it. It's good, man. You know. C Dub, when it comes to rub, C Dub Rub knows what he's doing. He does. And uh, I, I know my kids are going to be throwing a daggone fit. They don't love this rub so much. And, uh, okay. We're going to do four. I'm going to do four of them with C-Dub, and then the other four, I'm going to do a Little Johnny B's Bonafide Rib Rub and Rooster Booster. Let's see how this thing goes right here. Little Johnny B's Bonafide Rig Rub and Rooster Booster. We like that one. Okay, well there's four. Man, uh, I hate I hate to use it all, but I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little more on C Dove's. Feeling the love with C Dove Rub. That stuff's good and hot too, boy. That's uh, some fantastic uh, rub for. Or chicken wings. You want chicken wings hot. I mean, that's really like the whole thing. And you drink beer with it, and uh, that really makes it good. Okay, now on the breast, I took the skin off two of them, and I left the skin on on two of them. So we can test out. Which ones we like better? And two of them, I'm gonna put smoking coals on. The one with skin, and one without skin, I'm gonna put smoking coals on there. Over. 
Smoking coals. Okay, and then two of them. I'm going to put drapers on. Draper barbecue rub. Let's see how it does. Oh, it's nice and red. I love red. I'm going to do half. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to get about a cup of vinegar and put in the bottom of this pan for it to sit in that vinegar. See now right there is why you don't want to uh, spray your chicken till it's over halfway cooked because all you do is wash the rub off. And that's true. I just did it. Man, look at that smoking coals on them big old breasts. That looks good. Somebody gonna be eating back here in a little bit. I got all my boys coming over. Okay. And then in the last pan. Put some vinegar in this wing pan too. Just so I can sit in the vinegar. A little bit of vinegar. I'm a competition prep uh, a competition prep thigh and I'm gonna do something unheard of there's a barbecue bro just found out about him barbecue bro I'm gonna use the California style rub on the uh, this competition one and so I'm gonna throw that skin back I'm gonna put this California rub all over it it's got a lot of pepper in it I'm gonna put the skin back put this California rub all over the top and I'm gonna turn it over put the California rub all over the bottom. Barbecue bro. I don't know. But we fixing to find out what it is about barbecue bro. That's good. Okay, I'm gonna get three chicken legs. One, two, three, and I'm gonna try this uh, Kansas City style rub from Barbecue Bro. Kansas City style from Barbecue Bro. Let's try that. Okay. Yeah, I got this regular thigh that I didn't trim at all because I want to compare it to the competition look when we get done. And then there's another competition. Uh, okay, for you guys who pull the skin off all the way on your competition uh, pieces of chicken, 
Here's this one. Okay. And I think for them two competition ones, I'm going to put Little Jenny Rib Rub and Rooster Booster on it. Pull the skin off. Put it under the skin. Put it over the skin. Now, little Johnny B's, I mean, pretty much. I mean, chicken's what it's for. Chicken's his main market is chicken. If you're out there struggling, looking for something for chicken rub, Johnny B's, little Johnny B's, bonafide rib rub rooster booster. Chicken rub is all he's for. And for competition, let's try one with smoking coals. Yeah, I'll put a lot on there. Let's see. Now. Bonfire rib rub and rooster booster. Alright, this right here is smoking coals. We're going competition on it. Okay. So we got a California a smoking coals and a little Johnny B. So now we're going to even it up. I got one more chicken wing. I got an un, un uh, prepared thigh that I'm not going to. Here's another chicken wing. And for comparison's sake, here's a thigh. Here's three legs, the other half of that box. And on these, let's see, so that's three, six, that's eight pieces of chicken. And here's another one I haven't tried yet. That's a Texas style rub uh, for barbecue bros. We're going to try that on here. On half these pieces. Now you're probably saying to yourself, man, if it's Texas style, it's just for brisket. We're going to try it on chicken. Ain't nothing wrong with us trying it on chicken. We're going to see what it'll do on some chicken. Let's, and let's compare how it tastes for a piece of chicken that's not competition. Uh, uh, trimmed. Compare it to the competition trim. Okay, and I love little Johnny B. I love Johnny's a great guy. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off with little Johnny B. I mean, let's see what he got. Man, C Dub. Well, actually, I got enough C Dub to do that chicken wing right there. I'm gonna do that last chicken wing of C Dub. Man, that stuff is hot. What you want on chicken, though? See the rub, feeling the love. Ooh, that one came off nice. And that came off nice. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Kansas City style. I think I need to put more on there. I didn't quite get enough on there. Okay, now we want to give a shout out to Smoking Gold. I used it the other day in uh, our cookout, and uh, I love Smoking Gold. And I want to give a shout out to Dr. Drapers. Man, he's got something good going on too. He sent me a couple bottles, and uh, and then we got Wills, which I'm gonna try on the Wild Wings today. 
uh, Will sent me a couple bottles, and uh, he was on a radio show, so we're going to try him out uh, today. I want to give a shout-out to all three of them guys. And Barbecue Stew, Barbecue Stew uh, sent me a bottle of every flavor of rub that he has. Uh, but to your testament, Barbecue Stew, I used them all already. <laughs> What's that say? But anyway, uh, I used all the smoking coals I had once already because... Uh, uh, we did a big thing down in uh, Georgia. So, uh, and then Drapers, I've been, I used one bottle and I've been saving this other bottle uh, uh, just because I hate to let it go because it's the only other bottle I got. And, uh, but we are going to bust it open for this taste test. I got my kids coming over and uh, hopefully my mom and them will come over. And uh, we're going to put just a little vinegar in the bottom of this thing. start a fire. I got some mega dry wood. Uh, but I'm going to try to start a fire without using any charcoal or anything. I know there's stuff in here on the ground is wet. But this wood is mega dry. So I'm hoping for success that it's so dry. Just gotta leave plenty of air pockets. Tell you somebody who can start a fire is good. It's Ben Lang. Oh my God, we down there. Uh, he's down there in uh, Las Vegas. He walked up to that one he's smoking. Man, he had a fire going. I swear, in ten seconds. Now, this isn't prepared or anything. You seen what I did? I put cardboard down the bottom. I'm gonna try to get started. I'm going to put three pieces of wood on top of it. I got this piece of bark here on this one piece of wood that I'm hoping will uh, light fairly easy. If I can get some uh, fire on it anyway. Put this piece of bark up on this bark. <laughs> if I can get the cardboard to burn, that's it. That's the next I did it the old campfire style way. I didn't want to do the charcoal today. I didn't want to do it with the charcoal. I got it done. Yeah, uh -huh, I got it going. I'll tell you what. Starting a fire that way is hard. I hope that's just not the cardboard burning. We'll see in a minute. <laughs> okay, we'll let the fire be gone and then we'll be ready to cook some chicken. Alright, I got the smoke rolling. I got the fire going. Man, I got the fire going. Got it all washed out, washed all the racks. Now we gotta let put the chicken here in a few minutes. Now that 
to the fire. I gotta let that go down a little bit and get them coals rolling in there. Get that on the front of it. Yeah, man. This is a cooked chicken. No charcoal, no nothing. Just some paper and some wood. I, uh, Alright folks, I put the seat dove rub, it's real hot on there. And uh then I put this uh Will's spicy on there, hot and spicy. And oh my goodness. Man, is it hot? <laughs> Woo! Got my nose running. You can smell sea dove's heat on there. And then I put that Will's hot and spicy on there. I'm gonna tell you something, friend, this sucker's hot. It's got me sweating. Josh, you got drapers and smoking coals. Yeah. Which one did you like the best? That, this one. Drape, best drapers. Yeah. Okay, so my son Josh, he likes drapers the best. Yeah, smoking coals and drapers. <laughs> 